In the first book of the Judeo-Christian Bible, God leads Adam, the first man, around the Garden of Eden to let him marvel at God's creation. According to the Midrash book of Jewish commentaries, God said to Adam, See my works, how good and praiseworthy they are, and all that I have created I made for you. Be mindful then that you do not spoil and destroy my world, for if you spoil it, there is no one after you to repair it. Midrash Kohelet Rabbah 713 all of the world's religions have some teachings inspiring us to take care of the earth. Unfortunately, we have not adequately heeded the words of the Most High, but we still have an opportunity to change if we act now. In September 2007, scientists began evaluating the new satellite data gathered during the summer melt season in the Arctic Ocean. According to Dr. Ted Skambos, a senior scientist at the U.S. National Snow and Ice Data Center, Glaciologists studying the data presented new findings. The speed at which the Arctic ice caps were melting had increased so incredibly that NASA scientist Dr. Jay Zwally predicted that all the ice might be gone from the Arctic Ocean by the end of the 2012 summer melt season. While Arctic ice was melting faster than predicted, at the other end of the world, Antarctic ice, which was not predicted to melt at all, was also found to be melting. What this means is that the rate and pace of human-caused global warming is happening at an even faster rate than the worst-case scenarios predicted by the United Nations Nobel Prize-winning Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. Today on Science and Spirituality, we will explore many of the indications that global warming is affecting the Earth today. It is important to remember that in the words of NASA scientist Dr. James Hansen, although in most cases we have reached the tipping point, he said we have not passed the point of no return, so that it's still possible to avoid the impacts. Thus, there is still time for us to take rapid steps to reverse the trend and preserve our loving home, the Earth, and all her precious inhabitants. When we return, we will hear from some experts on the front line of the science of climate change. Light the way. No, Gizmo! No, no! Motion sensor lighting can reduce your average energy consumption by as much as 33%. Answer the call. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality. Today on Science and Spirituality, we are examining recent evidence that global warming is affecting Earth inhabitants at a very rapid rate. By some estimates, during the 20th century, around the world, average sea levels rose approximately 10 to 15 centimeters, or 4 to 6 inches. Findings from Professor Will Steffen, former executive director of the International Geosphere Biosphere Program and an advisor to the Australian Greenhouse Office, suggested that in the next 50 to 150 years, sea levels could rise much higher than that. According to Professor Mark Meyer of the University of Colorado in the United States, this could potentially displace over 100 million people living in the coastal areas, from New York to Shanghai to Bangladesh. And so the predictions that scientists have made in the past about how the sea level is going to rise, okay, were not based upon any knowledge of the fact that the ice sheets can change quickly. Well, the ice sheets themselves reflect a lot of solar radiation because they're bright. Right, right. But, but that's not the main impact of the ice sheets themselves. Uh, some of the studies you may be seeing refer to sea ice. Sea ice is frozen seawater. I see. And, and when it melts, the, it exposes ocean uh -huh. okay. and the ocean absorbs more heat because you don't have a reflecting snow cover. Right, right, right. And so that has a feedback mechanism that can cause the ocean to warm even more. Right, And right, it melts right. more ice and it absorbs more heat. But in terms of the glaciers, uh -huh. the glaciers reside in both Greenland and, and Antarctica. Okay. 
And, and what's happening with the glaciers in both Greenland and Antarctica is that a lot of them are speeding up recently. They're, fl they're, they're flowing, moving I see. faster. Faster. And so they put more ice into the ocean, which causes sea levels to, uh -huh. to rise. And the recent study that I published with <laughs> Dr. Rigneau, who was the lead author, I was a right. secondary author, uh -huh. um, was measuring in Antarctica the fact that in one part of Antarctica, West Antarctica, uh -huh. The glaciers over the last 10 years, many of them have sped up. I see. And so they're losing more ice into the ocean. I see. And that causes an impact on the sea levels to run. Right. Across the globe, countries are already reporting evidence that the rising sea levels are having an effect on their coasts. These are the kind of findings that Mr. Asher Mims of the United Kingdom's Tyndall Research Center on Climate Change is bringing to inform the public and advise the government on the state of the planet. Cities are particularly vulnerable to climate change and in particular sea level rise because most global cities, most of the world's big cities are built on the coast and so they are going to suffer sea level rise. Studies have also been released from the governments of Greece, Spain, Canada, the United States, OLAC or Vietnam, China and Senegal, all attesting to rising sea levels. There have been reports of erosion of the coastlines in areas such as New York City, Shanghai, Bangladesh, Newfoundland, Alaska, Olac, and Patras, Greece. Some inhabited islands have already seen significant tracts of land claimed by the sea, at least one of which has already completely disappeared under the surface. Memories of the devastating flooding experienced in England this past summer are still etched firmly in our minds. Research by Britain's Marine Climate Change Impacts Partnership indicates that the trend for stormier weather is only likely to increase. The partnership released a report in January 2008 which found that seas were getting rougher and warmer. 17% of British coasts were already experiencing erosion, while her marine life was found to be suffering from the warmer, acidic waters. Can science really attribute weather patterns and disasters to global warming? Let's find out when we return. This is Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television.